Hi, I'm Lucy. Hi, I'm Neha. And we're here at Science Museum Leeds. Behind us is the Pegasus 1959 valve-based computer. Uh, and we're going to talk to you about DNA computing, which is uh, the cutting edge of modern computing. Um, so, DNA computing is a form of computing which uses DNA, biochemistry and molecular biology instead of the traditional silicon-based computer technologies. DNA computing, or more generally biomolecular computing, is a fast developing interdisciplinary area. Research and development in this area concerns theory, experiments and applications of DNA computing. The term Melectronics has sometimes been used, but this term had already been used for an earlier technology, a then unsuccessful rival of the first integrated circuits. This term has also been used more generally for molecular scale technology. Uh, capabilities of computing. DNA computing is a form of parallel computing in that it takes advantage of many different molecules of DNA to try many different possibilities at once. For certain specialised problems, DNA computers are faster and smaller than any other computer built so far. Furthermore, particular mathematical com computations have been demonstrated to work on a DNA computer. As an example, DNA molecules have been utilised to tackle the Simon problem. Aaron Naipi has provided a general implementation of Strassen's matrix multiplication algorithm on a DNA computer. Although there are problems with scaling, in addition, Caltech researchers have created a circuit made from 130 unique DNA strands, which is able to calculate the square root of numbers up to 15. DNA computing does not provide any new capabilities from the standpoint of computability theory, the study of which problems are computationally solvable using different models of computation. For example, if the space required for the solution of a problem grows exponentially with the size of the problem on von Neumann machines, it still grows exponentially with the size of the problem on DNA machines. For very large x space problems, the amount of DNA required is too large to be practical. There are certain methods. Uh, so there are multiple methods for building a computing device based on DNA each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Most of these build the basic logic gates and or not associated with digital logic from a DNA basis. Some of the different bases include DNA zymes, deoxyoligonucleotides, enzymes, DNA tiling, and polymerase chain reaction. So DNA zymes are um, catalytic DNA, deoxyribozyme or DNA zyme, catalyze a reaction that, when interacting with the appropriate input, such as a matching oligonucleotide. These DNA zymes are used to build logic gates analogous to digital logic in silicon. However, DNA zymes are limited to one, two, and three input gates, with no current implementation for evaluating statements in series. The DNA zyme logic gate changes its structure when it binds to a matching oligonucleotide. <laughs> Oligonucleotide, <laughs> and the fluorogenic substrate is bonded to its cleaved free. While other materials can be used, most models use a fluorescence-based substrate because it's very easy to detect, even at a single molecule limit. The amount of fluorescence can then be measured to tell whether or not a reaction took place. The DNA zyme that changes is then used and cannot initiate any more reactions. Because of this, these reactions take place in a device such as a continuous stirred tank reactor where old product is removed and new molecules are added. Two commonly used DNA zymes are named E6 and 8-17. These are popular because they allow cleaving of a substrate in any arbitrary location. Stojanovic and McDonald have used the E6 DNA zymes to build the Maya 1 and Maya 2 machines, respectively. Stojanovic has also demonstrated logic gates using the 817 DNA zyme. While these DNA zymes have been demonstrated to be useful for constructing logic gates, they are limited by the need for a metal cofactor to function, such as zinc. 2 plus and ma manganese 2 plus and thus are not useful in vivo. <laughs> That's right. That's all right. <laughs> Chose a hard one. <laughs> are you scientists? 
I write about stuff like this. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> What, what, you write about this kind of thing? Yes, that's right. What, what do you write about? Uh, life sciences, technology, modern, uh, like emerging, developing technologies in life sciences. Oh, wow. So there's a, that's why I know about it, <laughs> a bit about it anyway. So mm. it's very interesting. Mm. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I'm an engineer though. <laughs> I'm an engineer. 